Hello and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the scenery work just above the tunnel area and also um, start finalising some of the finer details down actually on the Bonhay Road section. So let's uh, head back a good few weeks for when we first started um, this particular project. So here we are. Um, before we get started, it's worth noting I did mention a little while ago that I was going to kind of wind down on doing step-by-step um, -step tutorials. So I'm going to try and go back to a little bit of old school um, style filming where we have a little bit of rambling, talking about what we're doing and then um, some montage uh, footage thrown in of obviously the stages uh, being built up. So as we look over this hillside just above the tunnel, um, I've already made a start on um, forming the landscape, usual methods here, uh, bits of uh, polystyrene which have all been shaped up using the hot wire cutter, uh, which is then covered in the usual sculptor mould and given a coat of earthy brown paint. So moving on from that stage, um, obviously going back down into the roots of what we've done previously using all the um, usual dirt textures, fine and coarse turfs and ground scatters. We're going to get all those popped down and um, get those all coated up in glue. So as we uh, wait for that um, layer of scenery scatters and materials to completely dry, I'm going to turn my attention now to some of the um, houses um, along the Bonhay Road section. Now towards the back of the layout, um, the houses along this section um, are actually kind of made up of a long line of terraced, uh, small Victorian terrace houses. And luckily enough, the actual houses that are pretty close to these houses are actually readily available off the shelf from the Hornby Skaldau range. Um, the only difference is that there's one window missing um, which isn't a problem and of course they're in brick colour so I will um, make these look like they've been uh, either painted um, brickwork or painted render and um, to finish to the edge of the back scene 
it takes just um, a little over three or a little under three houses so the end house itself will have to be uh, subject to the um, angle grinder to um, get that down to the right size so it fits up against the uh, back scene. So moving towards the front edge of the layout and uh, taking a look at the houses um, which were next to the um, little bit of wasteland where the billboard sign is. Um, had enough room just to fit actually two of the last um, houses from that terrace on the actual baseboard and uh, being that this is quite a major focal point of the whole layout and um, obviously a great place to capture the trains going over the bridge these particular houses had to be as close to the real thing as possible. Now I did spend a lot of time looking through the internet trying to find something that was readily available off the shelf in either something that was ready made or in kit form and uh, that was very unsuccessful. So with that in mind what I've done um, is I've turned um, my attention to having something scratch built uh, but rather than me having to I suppose take a lot of time away from the layout and actually doing any of the scenery work so I've actually commissioned this job out for someone to actually make this house um, as close to the real thing as possible. I'm just going to run through a series of pictures which were sent to me um, throughout the process of obviously building this scratch built house and um, there's just no detail missed off of this and uh, it's pretty much identical to the real um, houses on that location and, a, and an incredible build. Um, so the person I got these uh, to do this commission for was, um, if you're not guessed already, Paul Chapman over at Galgorm Hall, uh, was more than willing to um, test some of his scratch building skills with some of the awkward angles of such and things like the roof. Um, obviously there's many different angles on there and uh, it's just incredible and it really does fit the scene and uh, makes really this scene totally come alive. So um, now we've got to try and get all these houses in position. So this is going to take a little bit of um, chopping and carving up of some of the landscape and bits and pieces just to make sure that everything fits in nicely and it all works and ties in as it should. So now we're going to turn the attention of obviously making uh, these houses bed into the scene. And um, obviously the Victorian terrace ones just behind the bridge, uh, the Hornby ones, they're quite easy. It's just a case of trimming back the pavement a little bit and making sure that's got a nice clean crisp edge and then they can be butted into the pavement and then blended in. Now the scene at the front next to where this um, scratch built house is going to be going, um, the actual wasteland next to it, I've never been happy with that. And um, the reason being is that I've made the actual embankment part of that a little bit too steep. Uh, the real location wasn't as steep as what it was, and it actually makes the billboard sign stick up too high. Uh, so I'm going to actually go down the route of actually adjusting this area completely and removing this section of the, um, the greenery that's obviously been put in there and get it back down to a decent level.
I think the sculpt to mold down on this section has had plenty of time to dry. So I'm um, going to kind of now carry on with the, um, the landscape on here. We're not going to go so much in the way of greenery in this area because it wasn't actually that green, funnily enough. Um, so we're going to make this look like a an area where people sort of park their cars up out of the way. Uh, so what we've got, um, the usual sort of process here is to cover up all the uh, white sculpts and mold with some nice brown paint. Um, usual uh, dirt texture sprinkled over the top of that. And I'm also going to start using um, something I've not used for a little while actually, is a load of gravel texture which I picked up a few years ago um, from a gravel driveway. Pull back the big stones, get the dirt underneath and then you just dry that stuff out and then sift it down through a kitchen sieve and you end up with a nice um, sort of gravel coarse texture ideal for this uh, particular wasteland. Um, on top of that as well we're just going to blend up some stuff um, so usual fine turfs, bits of coarse turf here and there and just start making this area um, fit within the, uh, the landscape it surrounds. Okay back up onto the hillside whilst we wait for all the stuff on the lower level to dry off somewhat. Going to turn our attentions to getting the um, surfaces down for the roads. So this corner piece here um, all I've got is a um, piece of grey mount board which I use for scratch building and that's just simply cut into shape and uh, glued down just using a bit of decorator's cork. The other side where um, the road goes in along the front of the um, big tall townhouse that will be there. Um, just using some watered down polyfiller so this generally makes it easier if it's quite runny just to be able to pour it in and it'll find its own self level. With that part um, sort of left ready in waiting to dry we can move on and make a start on um, fitting the brick terrace just along the front here obviously which gives me the uh, multi-layer for the gardens. Now I've made up um, a little sort of retaining wall um, sort of garden area with a few steps um, so nothing more than just some simple uh, wills uh, scratch building brick sheets and um, just sort of glued together on some grey board card and uh, the steps are just a simple process of uh, some certain basic paving slabs bits of brick uh, nothing special or fancy on this and this is just glued in place just using decorators cork So with that walled uh, terrace part in, we can set the bungalow in its uh, final place and start marking out where the paving slabs go. For the slabs themselves, I'm just using some um, laser cut card from um, Scale Model Scenery. So these are the uh, paving slab kit. Uh, these have been painted just using a sponged um, dabbing effect, uh, using the various shades of concretes, greys, tans, browns, just to give some variation to each slab. Sticking them down just using some Mod Podge and uh, making sure that I keep a nice uh, straight edge all the way along for the perimeter of the uh, bungalow. Once the slabs are all down, I did choose to use the uh, 2 by 3 foot size slab here. Um, any other areas of the ground around the bungalow which um, hasn't been painted already, it was just painted in brown and ready for any static grass. Moving on to um, the roads, um, simple process here just using some simple white and black paint um, splodge that all over the surface and then just use a sponge just to blend those colors in and give you a nice tarmac effect just to add a bit more dirt to um the tarmac so it doesn't look too grey, just a little bit of brown applied to the sponge so just brush that on and then just blend that into the grey whilst it was still wet. Right with those sections done we can now uh, move on to static grass and I'm going to take a quick opportunity just to bring you up to speed with the grasses that I'm using. Um, throughout the rest of the layout I have stuck with four and six millimeter summer uh, topped off usually with some of the straw which is all the green seed range I'm sure many of you know that as you if you follow previous videos um, I have touched upon some gardens um, right over the Exeter North End which was some time ago and um, I'll bring you up to speed with how I'd go about the grass obviously in back gardens uh, for um, 
areas of obviously lawns, um, we want to stick to something as low as possible in terms of height and um, the smallest green seam do is two millimeter, which does equate to six inch long grass. So that is typically something that you would get your lawnmower out on just to take the top of your grass off as it'd be a bit too long. Um, in model form, it's perfectly fine and doesn't look too long. Um, the colors I'm using here is Lush, uh, which is on its own is quite a vibrant color. So I tend just to mix a very small amount of um, the two millimeter straw in with that mix as well, just to um, take that sort of uh, brightness away from it. So around the bungalow area itself, I've gone for a more greeny sort of well-kept lawn. So uh, in case of just using a little bit of Mod Podge glue, we spread that all the way around the bungalow and uh, straight in with a static grass applicator and just blanket cover the uh, land with all the glue on. Down along the front of the terrace, um, I wanted to make, obviously I wanted the grass to be uh, just as short, uh, but I wanted that to look a little bit less uh, well kept. So we've gone for more of a sort of yellow uh, sunburnt type of uh, grass here so I've just increased the amount of um, straw colour into the green and that gives us a nice variation of colour between the two elevations of that uh, garden for the bungalow. All the other areas around uh, the hillside is just going back into the usual summer blend um, which is obviously green seen again in the um, both four and uh, six millimeter uh, that's just glued down in random patches and um, just topped off with a little bit of layering spray and then a quick shake over uh, with some six mil straw that gives us a nice little uh, height of the grass it's nice long grass stems there and of course you've got that nice straw color on top of it as well okay so moving back down to Bonhay road and i'm now ready to uh, set this um, end terrace in completely now and we need to build up the uh, land form just behind the houses and in between uh, the retaining wall for the hillside. As you can see, the actual house, uh, the doorways out the back are obviously got quite a substantial drop. Um, obviously, so we now need to build the land up um, so it kind of fits up to the correct height of where the uh, patio door, uh, doors are at the back. Uh, so for this, and to be able to make this building removable quite easily, so um, I've got some grey board and that's been um, cut and shaped up into the uh, area to fill this land in where the house sits and it also acts as a nice little um, marker as well to be able to draw around the house and use the card as the actual main base. So with the house uh, positioned we can draw around that and uh, that now gives me the outline for where I need to build the landscape up to bring the uh, ground up to the right height. For this I'm just using some polystyrene sheeting, um, this is around about sort of 20 millimetres um, thick so it's ideal and it brings me right up to the correct height of the patio doors and it's just a case of just using a hot wire cutter once that's uh, all been glued to the card we can trim all the excess away and that gives me um, perfect height. So with all that lot in and uh, glued and dried we can move on to um, fitting the paving slabs and I think really being the fact that this is quite a um, enclosed terrace um, there's not going to be much in the way of a, a grass lawn or anything like that so we're just going to stick with uh, the good old scout model scenery paving slabs again in this area. So again these are just glued down the same as I had done in the past um, around the bungalow just a bit of Mod Podge glue and uh, rather than doing them individually I've just taken them straight off the um, sheet as they are and uh, they can be placed down in sort of great big bundles all together. So we're just now going to um, add a few um, bits and pieces of uh, scenic detail around the houses. Um, so I've grabbed a few bits and bobs from Scout Model Scenery. Uh, what we've got here is their six foot fence panels which are a great kit and uh, very simple to put together and uh, very realistic. I've also picked up some of their six foot trellises as well, which will make a nice little scenic break along the um, elevated uh, sections of the garden on the bungalow. And also as well, I'm just going to use some um, leftover bits and pieces from the Wills uh, arch kit that I had when I built the uh, Bon Hay Road bridge, uh, just for some nice retaining walling just around this top car park area.
So with those little bits and pieces in, there's still an awful lot more bits and pieces that we can crack on and do. But for now, I'm going to call it a day on the video at this particular point and uh, going to work off camera now, uh, bringing all the last bits and pieces together. We'll update that in a future video. To end out on this one, I'm going to clip over now to a nice little montage of um, the usual stuff of trees, bushes, brambles uh, that you've seen in previous videos, um, all beginning to really bring this scene to life. So as always, I uh, just want to say thanks for uh, keeping up to date with uh, the channel. I know the videos aren't as frequent as I would like them to be, uh, but we are still battling on with the layout. And um, I appreciate all your comments and uh, all your continuous support in uh, watching this layout grow. So um, until the next one, I'll see you all again soon. Cheers for watching.